and welcome to Monday with Get Healthy and Stay Balanced. I'm Diane Dumas, for those of you who do not know me. Um, I'm a guitar instructor at the Colburn Senior Center, as some of you may know, but I'm also a health enthusiast. So I am so excited to be part of this 10-week virtual program from the town of Oakville and um, to share with you all kinds of tips and strategies over the next 10 weeks on how to get healthy, healthier, and stay balanced in your life. Lots of tips and ideas and food recipes and um, all kinds of things for not only your body but your mind. So, um, and I'll also have a Q&A at the end of the session if you have any questions that you may want to uh, ask. And as we're going along, if there's something that you uh, would like to comment or say or you feel would be really important as, we, as I'm going through maybe some of the different food choices today, you can send me a little note in the chat box and I'll look at that as well. So once again, so happy, welcome here. It's a great November morning and none better than now to start to think about getting healthy with our immune systems as the winter is coming and the snow is actually flying this last weekend so we know that uh, it's imminent that we are going to be staying indoors more and we want to do things to uh, keep our mind healthy and our bodies healthy as well so as i mentioned each week will be a different subject um, from good food choices and tips on relieving stress and achieving mental clarity. So please spread the word with um, your friends and neighbors to tune in on Mondays. In addition to the uh, live class here every Monday morning at 10, the class sessions will be recorded. So for further viewing, you can um, tell your neighbors as well to tune in and check the recorded videos. Okay, so um, let's get started. If we could look at the first quote that I have from Benjamin Franklin. And you can see that on the screen. Okay, so um, it talks about, you know, making excuses. And this is something that you know, we're really good at doing, um, saying things like, I don't have time, or it takes too much time to get healthy. Um, it does take be being organized, but we're going to talk about ways in this session as well, and in the next following nine weeks, that you can make time for yourself. And if you're prepared and you give it some forethought, you can actually role really well with a healthier lifestyle and healthier food choices. So a part of it is about planning, but the first part is making, making a decision and realizing that um, there are no excuses. So we need to uh, say that we're going to go forward and we're going to adopt some of the things that I'll share with you, even if it's only one thing that you can do this week, that one small change that you can bring that will make such a difference in the days, the months, the weeks going forward, and the years, of course. So let's move on to uh, breaking the fast. So you can take this, the uh, quote off. Thanks, Daniel. So breaking the fast. So breakfast is, today is called basically breakfast. And as I mentioned, every week's going to be really different. But today we're talking about breakfast and breaking the fast. So a lot of you might grab your morning joe. Uh, which isn't such a bad thing because coffee does have benefits, but it's when you get into the second and third and fourth cups that you need to get pull you through the day. That's when it becomes a problem because coffee is very acidic. And we know that our bodies and our immune systems run better when our body is more alkaline than being acidic. So one alternative that I've I guess it's been a year now that I broke the coffee uh, habit. Not to say I don't occasionally have a cup of coffee. I do. But um, being a musician, just on a personal note, I found that when I was drinking coffee, it affected my central nervous system. Maybe not to the point that you may experience, but as a musician, my hands would tremor a little bit. And playing music, that really affected my ability to, to have control with piano and guitar. So um, besides a racing heart, 
um, the tremor in the hands really was not good for my health. And I was really looking for an alternative, something that I could enjoy in the morning that was hot, that tasted like coffee, that felt like having a cup of coffee. And I discovered this. And this is called Dandy Blend. And I have this in the morning. You can have it with hot or cold water. You can make it, you can put two teaspoons in for more of an espresso type of um, experience or just a table, teaspoon or tablespoon with, uh, to resemble a regular coffee. But it is basically dandelion root. And it's got in here, um, I'm just going to read a little bit because I can see the back and you won't be able to. So let me read that for you. And it says, the easiest way to get dandelion in your diet. Dandelion detoxes the liver. So that's one reason that we want to have it in our diet. Um, there's no additives or preservatives, nothing artificial. It is of three roasted roots and two roasted grains, nothing else. N no gluten, um, no gluten, all gluten from the barley and rye is eliminated in the extracting process. No pesticides. It's dandelion chicory extract, and it is fabulous. Really good for people with diabetes as well, but you always want to check with your health physician um, before any changes, dietary changes. I really enjoy it. I have it here in my fabulous mug. And, you know, I think getting healthy, you have to do things that make you feel good. And for me, when I have my morning coffee, I like to have it in a particular mug. And I don't know if you're like that, but this one I did get from Starbucks and it has a nice rubber bottom. So it doesn't uh, leave um, marks on furniture, you know, um, any kind of, you know, those rings, you know, when you have company over and you have that wonderful piece of antique furniture and they put down their hot coffee cup on it and then you pick it up and there's that ring and you go, ah. So it doesn't do any of that. And I put it in my favorite cup every day and I enjoy it. And I actually have two, three or four. And sometimes I even have it at night. So fabulous idea to maybe try. Um, you can't always purchase the dandy from regular stores. I do purchase it from Organic Garage and Nature's Emporium where they tend to have more things that are off the mainstream. So just an idea for, for your coffee. But let's move on to breakfast. And today I'm going to talk about pancakes and a really easy recipe for making pancakes. So I'm going to show you the picture of my pancakes that I made on the weekend. And then we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay, so that, those are my homemade pancakes. Um, where do I start with this? Well, what I love about this recipe is that everything gets thrown into my Vitamix. So I start with my eggs and uh, my vanilla. Daniel's going to put up the, let's put up the next slide so you can see the recipe. And I, by the way, I hope you had breakfast so that I'm not making you extremely hungry now. Um, four large eggs. I put in almond milk. I am basically dairy free. I do drink goat, goat milk, but I do try to avoid dairy. Uh, so I use almond milk or cashew milk. Avocado oil. Um, I used coconut oil instead of the avocado oil and vanilla extract. So I put all of that in the blender. I give it a quick whip or turn on the blender, my Vitamix for a couple minutes or not even a couple minutes, maybe 30 seconds. And then I go ahead and I add my almond flour and a sweetener. Uh, you can, I use, um, I did use Swerve. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, baking powder, salt, and that's basically it. Although I doctored it up a little bit to give it a little bit more of a protein punch. So instead of two and a half cups of the blanched almond flour, I added um, something that I really, really like. And this is a keto collagen protein powder that I purchased at Whole Foods. And this is from Ancient Nutrition, a really fabulous company, not a lot of bad fillers in this protein powder. This happens to be the chocolate flavor. There's vanilla as well. So I subbed out a half of that cup of almond flour 
and put a half a cup of this in instead, just to give me that extra protein that I wanted in the pancakes. So after I did the first 30 second mix of the eggs, the almond milk, the coconut oil, and the vanilla extract, then I added the flours, the sweetener, baking powder, salt, and again, put it on just so that everything was mixed up. And that was my recipe. And then it's quite liquidy. Um, if you could show the next slide. Oh, actually, it's not going to be in there. Or maybe uh, the next one after that should be yes. Oh, no. Okay. But same idea. So you can still go to that slide, Daniel, with the ice cream scoop. Um, I do use that as well for my pancakes. We're going to talk about my muffins in a minute, but that ice cream scoop is one of my favorite tools because I use it to, in the blender, just scoop out enough of a uh, good portion and then put it in my frying pan for the muffins, and it's not as messy that way. I do use, I mentioned coconut oil. So coconut oil is fabulous for your health. It's one of the healthier oils to use. This brand here, um, it doesn't really matter so much on the brand, but you do want um, non-GMO, and you do want the cold-pressed virgin coconut oil, okay? Because just the way it's processed, this is a healthier version to have. And I use this in the pancake recipe. I did take it and put uh, it in a separate pan and melt the coconut oil before I added it to the pancake recipe. Although my Vita mix probably could have mixed it up even if it was in a solid form, but it, the recipe does say to have it um, liquidified. So using this coconut oil is fabulous. I also greased my uh, frying pan with it before I made the pancakes. Um, you can use this to remove makeup. I actually put a teaspoon of this in my dandy blend coffee this morning, or coffee alternative. So I put it in my mug and I added a little goat milk and I whipped it up and it's like my fabulous latte. And having the oil, that healthy um, fat in your coffee really gives you the energy or your coffee alternative, I'm referring to it because I do call it my coffee. Um, it gives you the energy to really help you in the morning to get through before you have your pancake breakfast, for instance. Talking a little bit about um, the sweetener. So I use Swerve. Swerve is actually a combination of um, xylitol and um, maybe erythritol. But this is another sweetener that I use. So I do not use processed cane sugar um, because it's just really not good for you. So I use alternatives. Stevia is another choice. This one here is, is really great. Um, this is the erythritol, and it's uh, a great alternative. Xylitol is another one. Xylitol doesn't spike, spike your blood sugar, and it actually is really great for your teeth because it starves the plaque-producing bacteria found in your mouth, and it feeds the friendly microbes in your digestive system. So xylitol is really fabulous for you. It's a naturally occurring alcohol found in most plants, and, or vegetables and fruits, that is. And it's also extracted from birch wood to make medicine. So that's a really healthy choice. And this one is erythritol. So um, zero calories, really healthy, won't spike your blood sugar. And it's just a matter of getting used to new nuances in your food. When you have a diet full of sugar and white flour, it is it does take time to make the change, but as I mentioned earlier, a l just one small change in your diet, you'll start to see the health benefits. Talking about salt, because I did put some salt in my recipe, and we use salt all the time. I like this one. This is real salt, and it's sodium chloride with, with the trace minerals like calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Table salt, your Windsor table salt, for instance, is so heavily processed, it contains additives to prevent clumping. 
It also contains MSG and bleaching compounds. So those are really terrible. There's no nutritional value in that salt. Plus there's a lot of additives that harm your health. So having something like real salt is a fabulous alternative. I use this all the time. The only time I don't use this one and I use the Himalayan pink salt is, is when I want to put it on top of my food as a finisher. And that works better than baking um, and cooking with salt. This one I use for baking and cooking. Diane, I have a question from the uh, from the chat. It's what is oh, the di I've what is the what is the difference between Swerve and Stevia, and why would you use one over the other? So um, Swerve is actually, and I will double check. I should remember because I do use it a lot. I think Swerve is a combination of Stevia and either erythritol or xylitol. It's a combination. So all of those things are healthy alternatives. The stevia, the erythritol, and the xylitol. They're all healthy, and Swerve is a combination of two. But I will definitely double-check that for you on our next session. Great. Um, and with my baking powder, I want to make sure that it is aluminum-free. So I think my brand is Bob's Red Mill with no aluminum. That's important because we don't want that um, in our bodies. Okay. So, oh, and then with my pancakes, I actually have, and I didn't bring it out. I will show you next week. It is a, um, a sweetener alternative, um, but I, I am a believer in maple syrup, uh, pure maple syrup, not um, the AJ one. I won't mention any names, but we want to, you know, I know ma maple syrup, getting the real one is more expensive, but I like the saying that I learned when I studied nutrition is you either pay now or you pay later. So even though you're paying a little bit more to be healthier with your foods, you're saving in the long run by going to the doctors and getting prescriptions and having poor health. So use the real stuff, use the whole stuff, avoid all the artificial um, ingredients that we found in, uh, find in all of our processed foods. On top of that, I have a swerve icing sugar. So that's where that white powder came from on top of the pancakes. It's not your regular icing sugar. It is the healthy one. And I actually have on top of that um, chocolate chips that are sweetened with stevia. So again, the sugar is out of them. And this is Lily's, Lily's uh, chocolate chips. Fabulous. Once again, uh, won't spike your blood sugar, low in the carbs. You just get the real healthy stuff. So that's the chocolate chips that were on top of those yummy, yummy, yummy pancakes. And by the way, my daughter tells me that the pancakes taste better the next day. So I do freeze them, the leftovers, and um, we heat them up in the toaster oven the next day, and they're nice and crispy, and they taste awesome. So when you do your batch in the blender following that recipe, you end up getting about um, 18 pancakes. So it's quite a bit. Okay. We'll move on. Let's go to the next breakfast recipe that I have, and we'll show the picture of that. And these are my muffins. So who doesn't like a muffin? I think we all do. A really good, quick, grab-to-go snack. The only problem is if you read all the ingredients in the muffins that you find at, on the shelves in your grocery store, there is so much extra stuff in there that you do not want to be putting in your body. So you're saying, yeah, but I don't have time to make muffins. Well, once again, we, we can't have those excuses. We have to make time. And we batch cook. So when you're going to make muffins one morning, make double or triple the batch and then freeze them. And then you have them to pop out um, and take with you. Um, they don't stay frozen for long. So even if you take one out of the freezer in the morning, an hour later, they're ready to eat. They're defrosted without, and do not put them in the microwave. I don't even have a microwave in my new house. I know there's one coming because my husband wants to heat up his coffee um, in the morning, but we've been microwave free for a year. Yay. So if we want to heat something up, we just put it in the toaster oven. So let's talk about the muffin recipe. 
The muffin recipe is, and we'll look at the next slide. Oh, so we can go back there for a second, Daniel. So that is my ice cream scoop once again. And I really like this tool. And it has the little handle where it, it um, takes the, the uh, batter nicely out. You don't have to bang it onto the muffin cups. It just scoops it out nice and easily. OK, so now we'll look at the recipe. And um, this one I used two bowls, two metal bowls. And I put my eggs in one. Again, I have my coconut oil liquefied. And um, it says here you can use pure honey. Um, you can do liquid vanilla stevia or coconut sugar. Or you can go ahead and put in your tablespoon or two tablespoons, if you like, of any other kind of healthy sweetener. And you need to experiment a little bit to see what, what you prefer. So you could even use maple syrup. That's a natural sweetener as well. And you're getting the goodness from the maple syrup. Teaspoon of vanilla extract, um, apple cider vinegar. So those are the wet ingredients. They go together. You give that a, a mix. And then you put your dry ingredients. So I have my almond meal. I, have, I do not use the arrowroot starch. Um, I just uh, actually put in more flaxseed. And then baking powder and cinnamon and salt. And the only other thing that's missing from that is you want to add, because my muffins have protein in them, I do use, once again, my keto collagen protein powder from Ancient Nutrition. So I put three scoops of this in the muffin recipe. And, you know, for a long time when I started getting healthy, I got a little... Um, I always felt that I had to follow the recipe perfectly or it wouldn't work out. But I have learned that, for instance, I leave out the arrowroot starch. There's too much carbs in it. So instead, I just put extra flaxseed. You don't have to follow things perfectly. There are some key ingredients you need, of course. You want to make sure that your liquid and your dry is balanced. But you can sub out. Don't feel intimidated that I, I can't do this recipe because I don't have this ingredient. Um, if you don't have the vanilla extract, OK, well, then you don't have it. Put an extra little um, teaspoon of maple syrup in. OK, so I think we, we get too caught up on, in it being perfect. And then it stops us from going forward and making healthy choices or even trying at all. Instead, it's like, oh, forget it. I'm just going to buy those muffins at the store because uh, it's too complicated. I don't have everything. Um, one thing that I like to do when I, when I bake or cook that I learned in one of my other chef uh, courses is it's called mise en place. I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's a French word. And it means have everything in place. So I take everything out on the island and so there f and my measuring cups and spoons so when i'm ready to bake or cook i'm not going back to the fridge and back to the pantry everything's there and then i do the cleanup at the end and that really helps so if i do if i am missing an ingredient part way through i can look for something else and have everything prepared before i start let's talk a little bit about some of the ingredients that are in the muffin recipe Apple cider vinegar. So the benefits of apple cider vinegar is that it's a good dose of enzymes. Now, I like to use the raw apple cider vinegar, um, organic as well, because it has all the good bacteria, if you like, inside of it. You, you, it hasn't been strained out. It supports your immune system with the good bacteria, and it aids in digestion. So even for some people that um, want to lower their blood sugar, you can take a shot of apple cider vinegar in the morning with some water um, or some lemon juice and just swallow it before you eat your meal. It will help you with digestion and also lower your blood sugar. So just be careful with that if you are with diabetes that you don't want to go too low. So just make sure you monitor it if you're doing that. So really, really healthy apple cider vinegar. And the almond flour, why do I use almond flour? Because it's packed with nutrients, and it's a great alternative to wheat. 
Um, there's two kinds. You might hear almond meal and almond flour. Almond meal is from the unpeeled almonds, and the almond flour is finer texture. It's lighter colored because the, the peel of the almonds has been removed. And it's lower in carbs than, than your traditional other flours. Hey, Diane, question from the chat. So I, I'm seeing a lot of these ingredients um, that I don't necessarily see in the grocery store I frequent. Is like, where where do folks go? Um, you know, because a lot of this conversation is going towards, you know, sort of adjusting your eating habits to where more it's healthy, clean mm -hmm. eating. So where, do, where can, like, can you shop like this at your local grocery store? Or, what, you know, what changes do you have to make on that end? Well, the great thing is I am seeing so many of these products uh, pr uh, products now in the regular grocer. Uh, almond flour you can buy basically anywhere now, as of before it was only found in the health food stores. Um, your flax seeds, you're seeing it at the regular stores. Um, real salt, I'm also seeing at Fortino's. Um, but things like your... Um, maybe your protein powders. This was from Whole Foods. Um, Organic Garage is another great place up on Kerr Street, just north of Spears. Well-priced. They have a lot of um, great baking supplies and food there as well. As I mentioned, Whole Foods. Nature Emporiums is another one. Goodness Me. Those are other stores. But, but look first in your regular grocery store in the organic section. That's where and you're going to find a lot of it. The next question is for me. Um, oh, great. So I see, I'm seeing words like, like paleo, you use words keto. Um, I eat, like I, I've, I eat a gluten-free diet. I'm just curious because I see that there is about, uh, there's a few participants on here. I don't know if maybe it would be helpful um, if we knew some, some other folks, if they were doing some type of, you know, dietary restriction or change, because maybe you could speak to some of these recipes from that, from that lens. Because uh, I'm already trying to do the math in my head of how I could make things gluten free. Because both of these are wonderfully glutinous. <laughs> um, so if 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 anyone uh, would like to, um, if they're able to unmute their mic microphone and they can share if they are going through any paleo, keto, gluten free, uh, whatever sugar free li uh, lifestyle that they're trying to uh, trying to accomplish, then maybe maybe Diane, you could speak to that. Yeah, certainly. And, and in, a, in an upcoming session, we're going to talk about the gluten and the wheat and why there's a problem with it now and why so many people are having a health crisis because of it. So that's going to be another a session. Um, but the general point is, is that we want our nutrition to come from good carbs, not just from high carbs. And we want our bodies to run on fuel that, you know, think of it this way. If you, if you have a fire and you have, um, you know, the kindling and you throw the kindling on, you know, you can't just burn, keep that fire going and kindling because it sparks, it builds up a big flame quickly, and which is like a spike in your blood sugar. And then it burns out. You have the crash. So if you eat a diet high in carbs, that's like, kin like having kindling on your fire. What you want to do is have those slow burning logs, those dense wood that it keeps burning through the day. And that's where you're going to get from a diet with burning more on the, on the fats, but the healthy fats, the healthy oils in your body and the proteins. And that's what's going to keep you fueled and running longer. So that's sort of the image that I like to think of. You know, we get um, a big sugar high. If you eat a chocolate bar, you get a burst of energy, but you know, up here and your blood sugar goes up and then after the spike, it crashes down. But if you have that, you know, for instance, I talked about this morning when I had my, my dandy, dandelion al coffee alternative and I added my coconut um, oil into it and a little bit of goat's milk or almond milk or cashew milk or oat milk that will fuel me that will you know definitely satiate me and keep me going so um, but we'll we'll address more gluten and keto and paleo lifestyles later but it's it's not really following one particular um, or subscribing to one particular type of food eating. It's just making healthier choices because I think we make it complicated. Oh, am I going to become paleo? Am I going to follow a keto diet? 
Um, what you want to do is just find healthier alternatives to the foods that you're already eating. It's like thinking not taking away from what you do, but just exchanging or substituting. So I'm not taking away your muffins. We like muffins. That's sort of a comfort food. But let's have a healthier version of it. Um, let's not buy the pre-packaged waffles and stick them in your toaster oven or even the pre-made pancake mixes. A lot of them are filled with additives and things that are high in carbs and no nutritional value. So instead, let's just throw together with basic ingredients that we all have in our pantries. We do, we do have some sort of flour. And if you don't have the healthier flour, then exchange it for maybe almond flour or coconut flour. Um, we do have baking soda. Just make sure it doesn't have aluminum. We do have salt. Just have salt with the proper trace minerals. We do have milk or something. Let's just maybe try the goat's milk or try a, an, an almond milk or cashew milk. We do have eggs. Um, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just changing things here to make healthier um, substitutes for what we already have in our pantries. Um, just to talk about a little bit about vanilla, because I want it to get through. I don't have my little, um, because I was cooking last night with it. Um, but real vanilla is good for your heart, and it's got healing properties. If you have a cough or cold, you can use the vanilla extract mixed with warm water to coat, to coat your throat. That provides an anesthetic effect and it helps the antibacterial properties to reduce inflama inflammation and irritation. So as a singer, this is a really good tip. Just with your regular vanilla extract and some warm water and taking that, you know, rather than going out and buying some expensive concoction for your throat, it's something you already have in your pantry. Flax seeds, I mentioned that in my uh, muffin recipe. So I like to buy my seeds and things and put them in little fancy jars in my pantry. Um, and then I keep my flax seeds in my fridge or your freezer. These are whole flax seeds. You can buy the already ground ones, um, and that's fine. Just make sure that they are refrigerated, and if you have a large amount, freeze them because they can go rancid. They don't keep forever. Please, 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 um, if you're buying the whole flax seeds, you do need to grind them. So here's just a coffee grinder, no longer used for coffee, but I grind my flax seeds fresh every morning. And later on, I'll be showing you a flax cereal made uh, uh, exclusively almost out of flax seeds. That's excellent for you. Why are flax seeds so important? Because they are high in the omega-3 fats. They're rich in dietary fiber, they can improve your cholesterol levels, they can lower your blood pressure, and they lower the risk of cancers. There's been a lot of studies done on flax seeds and cancer, so this is something everyone needs to start adding to their health. This little seed, also known as the linseed, provides so much health benefits to you, um, and if you're adding a little bit, you won't even taste it. I put it in my morning smoothies in my Vitamix, I add it to my muffins, I even add it to my pancakes sometimes. So it's just something I try to use daily and I sneak it in wherever I can. So a really, really important um, something to maybe for this week, we talked about maybe doing one thing to add to your health, add your flax seeds. And you can buy them anywhere. Sometimes they're gold, sometimes they're brown. It doesn't make a difference. Diane, I have a, a question from the chat here. Yes. Uh, so first question is, where can uh, where can they buy the Dandy Blend? blend. Yes, that's <laughs> harder to f yeah, that's that's harder to find the Dandy Blend. So there's only two stores. You can and a lot of these things now you can order on Amazon. So if you can't get out to one of the stores, you just Google it and you can have it shipped right to you. I buy this one, or I just recently bought this one um, yesterday at um, Organic. Um, uh, organic Planet, right, I'm thinking, or, no, Organic Garage, I'm thinking Healthy Planet, no. So Organic Garage on Kerr Street, just north of Spears, Nature's Emporium has this, and that's the only two places that I've seen it. Um, so you're not going to find this and your mainstream grocer, unfortunately, 
um, that's one item that you won't. Yeah, the other question is if the, the dry dandelion, which are used to make wine, can be used for coffee. Yes, okay. Um, is that a question or a comment? That was a question. I don't know. Um, I do know that dandelions picked right out of the ground are healthy to eat. Um, dandelion greens are wonderful to um, eat and also to juice, to put in your juicer. But the problem is you want to make sure that that ground hasn't been sprayed with pesticides. So you need a, a definitely a lawn that has never been sprayed with any kind of chemicals if you're picking dandelions. If, uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but the user writing in MHUI3, uh, feel free to uh, follow up in the chat if you, if you have Certainly. more Certainly, yes. Thank you, Diane. Great. Um, anything else that we needed to talk about? Uh, we talked about apple cider vinegar, the almond flour, cinnamon. So cinnamon is uh, missing, oh, I have it here. So again, I have put my cinnamon in a jar. I fancy these mason jars because they, they, um, they're easy to use and we all have a lot of these around. They're relatively um, inexpensive and you don't have to deal always opening the packages and the powders flying out. It's just nice and convenient. So cinnamon reduces insulin resistance in the body, which helps the glucose metabolize in the liver. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial effects, and it supports your immune health. I like to add maybe half a teaspoon to cinnamon to most baked things that I do. So that would be my muffins, my cookies, any kinds of cakes. And all these things are yummy, but I have the healthy alternative, so I don't have guilt eating these things. Um, I, have, I, do, I get energy from them and health from them rather than the other. I think that covers all of the um, food items that I mentioned today and the nutritional points to, with all of them, which is so important. Any other last minute questions that you may have? Yeah, I will. So if anyone wants to uh, turn off their mic, uh, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, the only comment remaining in the chat is, um, so the user MHUI3 mm -hmm. wrote, love your pancakes and muffins. Yay. Thanks, Diane. Yes. Um, so if anyone has any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask, and I'll leave the space open for a moment just for folks to unmute. I hope you didn't find it overwhelming because when I started about 10 years ago changing the way that I ate, and, and I was never a garbage eater, okay? So it's not like I ate McDonald's or anything like that, but I, I didn't know about, you know, the good protein powders. I didn't know about the alternative flours. I didn't know about, you know, the real cinnamon and um, the better salt. So... It was overwhelming. I felt like, oh, everything I'm eating is just not not good. And, and it almost became a stress to me. So I just want to encourage you as you join me every week, and not that we're going to always talk about food. We're going to have lots of other subjects as well. But not to look at it is that you have to change everything overnight because you can't. And we don't need to add more stress to our, to our lives. We already are living in stressful times out there. What we want to do is maybe just make a goal. Can I try one new thing this week? Can I maybe sub out one new thing for a healthier alternative? And our journey starts in life with one step at a time. So I just encourage you to adopt that mentality and embrace, embrace the changes rather than saying, you know, beating yourself up over it and saying, I've been doing all those terrible things. I've been having those processed foods and my, my freezer is full of, um, you know, packaged uh, meals. That's okay. We have to all start somewhere and it's never too late to start. And we just make one change, one simple change. And we, ch we make it with gratitude that we are taking care of ourselves because eating healthy is a sign of self-respect, and we need to be kind to, not only to others, but kind to ourselves. So um, hopefully that just encourages you today to start your journey small. Diane? Yes. Will you be, will you be posting your, those recipes that you put out? 
Um, that's a question for Daniel because I don't I don't have in there um, you know how to how to heat your griddle to whatever degrees because I figured yeah. that's not necessary. It's just the ingredients in that. So I'm not sure if that's so, something. Uh, I can speak to that. So, uh, Diane, so if folks uh, if folks want to submit I have a uh, comment. their email privately to me in the chat, I can send okay. the images um, Perfect. that Diane shared uh, That's with great. me in okay. advance for the slides. And yeah, I, I'm, I've never been able to find that almond flour. I've tried Fortino's. I, I tried that goodness me because it was for another recipe. I couldn't find it anywhere. And oh. uh, even at goodness me, they'd never heard of it. Of almond flour. Yeah. Okay, it's there. It's I I it's it's everywhere. So um, you when can I, find it at Bulk Barn. And Bulk They're Barn there? is yeah. Bulk Barn. They have it in Bulk Barn. They don't have it packaged. Oh. They have it in a bin. Like if you're yeah. comfortable with getting it out of the bin. Um, but the packaged ones, yeah, they're they're everywhere. Even. I was at a grocery store in Bolton, like a just a little privately owned grocery store, and they're there as well. So um, uh -huh. take another look, but look in the organic section, Linda. Don't look in yeah. the mainstream. That's the difference, is you're going to find it with the organics. Okay, I'll try that. Thanks. Great. Um, I just want to... Um, uh, is I mean, another, I, sure, go ahead. Darcia? Yeah. Uh, two, two, actually. Uh, the first would be... Uh, I think, as you said, it doesn't matter when you start making changes. Uh, in particular, the, the aging body uh, begins to, you know, make changes in terms of cholesterol and that kind of thing. So some of the tips that you've given, in particular, the flaxseed. Um, I mean, I try to eat healthy. I, I'm not on all organic, uh, but but it seems that the slowing down of the body um diabetes too becomes a, a critical uh issue for aging seniors uh, and so the, some of the tips that you're giving in terms of making the changes can help to curtail um some of the issues that we face those of us over 60 etc the other thing the other question that i have um uh, you know bulk barn uh, what's your comment and take on bulk barn? Like the open, for example, you said, well, it's open bin. Well, two things. Um, if you are concerned about it being organic, then the bulk barn usually doesn't have the organic almond flour. Um, so it, and in terms of the open bin, um, it, it depends on management. Um, my concern sometimes is, do the bins get empty completely and cleaned out before they add more flowers on top? Because years ago, I bought something from the bulk barn, or actually was given to me. It was some sort of flower, I believe. And I guess it had some little bugs in it. And my pantry got filled with these and I know it came from the bulk barn because mm. things had been, you know, um, in there too long or haven't been cleaned over. So you just, it depends on how the store is run. So just be careful with that. Um, I, not, I have bought bulk flowers there before and even chia seeds there before, but um, I tend to look for mostly organic things and package things. So, um, it's it's sort of up to you okay yeah and the, and bulk barn does have a lot of packaged things now too um a lot of the really great pasta alternatives um like white rice pasta or um things like that uh, quinoa pasta they're also found at the bulk barn as well so and they're in packages um so you know just um use your own discretion with that um but as I was saying to Linda, you know, we can find the almond flowers at most grocery stores now. So just want to bring and conclude the program with, um, you know, uh, treating yourself. And one thing, because I do spend a lot of time in the kitchen or I do make things all generally from scratch. We don't go through drive through restaurants and take out and things like that. Not to say sometimes I don't go and have a, a pizza because I do, but I try to, you know, live healthy most of the time. But part of um, what is rewarding to me or things that I enjoy is um, little things in life that bring me great pleasure. 
And this is a product that I really, really enjoy. This is Mayer's um, Cleaners. So I'm really not trying to promote a product. It might be a different one for you, but th these are natural cleaners. And I'll show you, I like them so much that I bought one in every different scent. So I use this for, these are dish soaps. And I have all the different flavors, or not flavors, but scents here. So I've got lemon, and I've got lavender, I've got rosemary, and bluebell, and basil. And they are fabulous. So when I do my cleanup, after making my muffins, my pancakes, whatever it may be, I put a squirt of this and I wash my dishes and I have that wonderful um, aroma from the natural um, scents of the mayor's, um, the natural uh, scent from each of these dish, different variety of dish soaps. And I have that um, experience, that aroma experience that just kind of makes me happy at the end of the day. They also have wonderful hand soaps, and I use these as well. So I'll just show you my little collection. They were on sale the other day at Whole Foods, which is usually kind of pricey. Um, and they were like $3 off, each of them. So that's why I have such a collection now. So this is going to, I'm actually stop, stocking up too in case we got l locked in. In during the next few months. I will not run out of any kind of dish soap or hand soap, but this is just a product that is a really clean product. And it has, just to give you a little bit of info on it in case you're not familiar with it, it is plant-derived. Um, this is what the word I was looking for, essential oils. That's what makes it fabulous. It's not fragrances in here that are synthetic, that destroy that can disrupt our hormonal balance. So a lot of the um, scented things that you buy, scented cleaners that you may purchase have synthetic fragrances in them and they interrupt your hormone balance and they're really toxic for your body. And that goes for all cleaners in your home. That will be another session. But these ones are environmentally friendly. They have the essential oils. Aloe vera is an extract in them as well. So they're super, super healthy and good for the, for the, um, the, um, for the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Good for the environment and good for you. So that's my little take go-to. That brings me great joy at the end of my cleanup. And um, that's the end of our program for this week for session one of Get Healthy and Stay Balanced. So my challenge to you this week is do one little thing, and if you join me next week, hopefully you can share that with me in a chat line or, um, or in a comment on what you did this week to make your life better and to enrich it. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, Daniel, for hosting this wonderful event, this opportunity to share wellness and to bring gratitude for today into our lives and i look forward to seeing you all tell your friends and family tune in next monday at 10. have a great week and thank you great thank you thank you so much diane and thank you to everyone who joined um we will end the um end the recording uh, and then if anyone wants to, I will leave the chat function open just for a few moments if they want to add their email address to receive the recipes. I know I've already sent a few out. Uh, otherwise, if you are uh, if looking for some more engagement later on in the day, please feel free to join us at 3 p.m. for a armchair travel, virtual travel with George Sanford, where he, I believe, is taking us to Prague today. Um, so we hope to see you then. If not, we'll see you next Monday with Diane. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye for now.